Helm Hammerhand, the most legendary king of the Rohirrim. Strong-willed, brave, exuding might. It was he who single-handedly saved Rohan from total destruction. Long after his death, many stories and myths of his incredible deeds still circulated among friends and foes alike. He bore no weapon, and no weapon would bite him. He stalked the night, looking for the enemies of Rohan, and if he was hungry and could find no food, he would eat them. The sounding of his horn was the sound of death approaching even long after the reign of a successor, for Helm Hammerhand did not bend the knee, not even to death. The boy who would become Helm Hammerhand was born in the year 2691 of the Third Age, his father, Gram, was the eighth king of the Riddermark and a direct descendant of the legendary Eorl the Young. By the time Helm reached adulthood, he was a disciplined, fierce champion and already considered the strongest man in all of Rohan. After the death of his father, he inherited the crown at the age of 15. By this time, he was the father of three children, two sons named Halet and Hama, and a daughter. For 17 years, King Helm ruled his land, and though no great wars were fought, the Riddermark was far from peaceful. For in the west, the Rohirrim were constantly at odds with the Dunlendings who had taken the ancient fortress of Isengard during the reign of Helm's grandfather. The hatred between these peoples went back to the founding of Rohan, for it were the Dunlendings who had lived in the lands that were later given to the Rohirrim. And when the horse lords came and settled the land, the Dunlendings were driven out en masse or killed. For centuries the Dunlendings and Rohirrim raided each other. By the time of King Helm, the Dunlendings were ascendant, spreading freely across western Rohan from their stronghold of Isengard and ruled by their petty lords. One of these lords was Frega. He was a prince of mixed blood as he claimed descent from King Freawin, the fifth king of Rohan yet had dark hair, extremely rare amongst the Rohirrim, but common among the Dunlendings. Freka was both rich, powerful and influential, and his arrogance was matched only by his size. Due to his power, King Helm begrudgingly kept him as a permanent advisor to his council but Frega took many liberties and only came at the summons of his king whenever he so pleased. And it was this arrogance which would raise the old conflict between Rohan and the Dunlendings to new heights. For at one of the king's council meetings he came, followed by many of his men, and he straight up demanded that King Helm's daughter should be wed to his son Wolf. His play was as obvious as King Helm's anger. He wanted to seize power in the heart of Rohan itself. But Helm rejected him, insulting him and making him a laughing stock to the rest of the council, infuriating Freyka. Old kings that refuse a proffered staff, Freyka threatened, may fall on their knees. The king remained calm and did not speak out immediately. 
but as soon as the council had concluded, he stood up and placed his strong hands upon Freyka's shoulders. The king does not permit brawls in his house, but men are freer outside. And with that, and his iron grip upon the arrogant lord, King Helm forced him out of the hall and out to the fields before the gates of Edoras. Freyka's men tried to intervene, but they were far outnumbered by the king's people, and they had no choice but to let the king turn their law to face him. Now then, landing, you have only Helm to deal with, alone and unarmed, King Helm spoke. But you have said much already, and it is my turn to speak. Freyka, your folly has grown with your belly. You talk of a staff. If Helm dislikes a crooked staff that is thrust on him, he breaks it. So! And as soon as the king had spoken those words, his arm shot forward, and with a single strike of his bare fist, King Helm sent the arrogant lord flying backwards, collapsing and dying soon after from that single blow. It was this very executing blow that gave the king his famous title, Hammer Hand. Freyka was dead, his family was declared enemies of Rohan, and the western borders of the realm were reinforced once again. There would be peace again, though only for a short time. For it had been only four years when disaster would strike. In the year 2758 of the Third Age, Rohan was once again invaded from the east, and with Gondor engaged in a fierce war with the Corsairs of Umbar, they were without allies to aid them. And this was the time the Dunlendings chose to strike. Led by Wolf, Freyka's son, they invaded the Westmark from Isengard and were joined by the enemies of Gondor that poured in from the mouths of the Lefnwy and the Isen. The Rohirrim were destroyed in every battle, and even when Helm Hammerhand himself tried to stop them at the crossings of the Isen, he was driven back and forced to take refuge the ancient keep of Suthburg, deep in the White Mountains, only to be besieged. Meanwhile, Wolf had overrun the rest of Rohan, killing, enslaving, and driving the remaining people of Rohan into the dales of the mountains. He had taken Edoras by force and had killed every defender, last of them Haleth the eldest son of the king, who died before the walls of the city. And then came the long winter. Snowstorms and freezing temperatures prevailed for five months. There was little food, too little. Cold and starvation killed both Dunlendings and Rohirrim alike. The situation in the Suthburg grew dire. In early 2759, Harmer, Helm's surviving son, got lost in the snow whilst foraging outside the walls and perished. And this was yet another heavy blow to his father. As the siege lasted, there was only one thing that became worse than the biting cold and the great hunger. And that was the horror that Helm Hammerhand instilled in the Dunlandings. For in the night, King Hammerhand would dress in all white, blow his mighty horn, and leave the safety of his stronghold to venture out into the gorge. There he crept into his enemy's camps, killing the Dunlanding soldiers with his bare hands. 
fierce and gaunt of famine and grief, so the rumors told. Helm Hammerhand would stalk the fields like a wraith. No weapon could harm him, no cold would touch him, and if he could find no food, he would feast upon the flesh of his foes. So great was the fear he instilled in the Dunlendings, that whenever his horn sounded from the burg, echoing between the mountains, the foes of Rohan would flee. Yet this could not last forever, for one night the men of Rohan heard the horn of Helm Hammerhand blowing, but the king did not return. When the sun rose the next morning, a white figure stood still upon the ramparts outside the walls, and no Dunleding dared approach him. There stood Helm, dead as stone but his knees were unbent. When spring finally came, Freyalaf, Helm's sister's son, surprised the Dunlendings and retook Rohan with Gondor's help. He broke the siege on the Suthburg and brought Helm's imposing body back to Edoras, where he was buried in the ninth mound before the walls of the city. Upon the mound, the symbol moon came to grow so thickly that the mound seemed to be clad in snow. The Suthburg would be renamed after the horn that sounded from it, Hornburg, and the valley where the stronghold lay would forever be known as Helm's Deep, and it would be forever a place of hope and strength for the Rohirrim, and a place of doom and terror for the enemies of Rohan for it was sad that at times the horn still echoed in a deep, and the wraith of Helm Hammerhand would walk among the foes of Rohan and kill. Thus we conclude this chapter and this video. Did the story surprise you? Let us know in the comments. If you enjoyed it and would like to learn more of the world of Tolkien, be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified when Mysteries of Westerness returns to Arda. This has been Irjikor Kuruvane, and I wish you all Namarie Meldonjar.